talk of defeat from the Democrats. Well, we've heard it on the campaign trail all year long, from warnings about the economy to new dire predictions about the housing and the stock markets. Are they investing in failure in a bid to win the White House? Hello, everyone. I'm Cherry Keenan, and welcome to Cashin' In. Let's get the stock smarts. Our Cashin' In team this week, we have the boys all here, Wayne Rogers, Jonathan Honing, and Jonas Max Ferris, along with Jerry Boyer. And Lee Gallagher, Dagan, will be back with us next week. And welcome, everybody. Okay, Jerry, we've had all these tremors in the housing market. Is this something the Democrats are going to seize upon and, and run with in the campaign? Uh, yeah, certainly. In fact, they're already starting to do that. Uh, I mean, additionally, this, this isn't just kind of an opinion thing. I, I looked at the futures markets. You know, they have these new um, odds makers who are looking at the futures market for whether the Dems will win the White House or whether the Republicans will win the White House. And I overlaid that with the probability of recession in 2008. <laughs> and what you find is an astonishing, uh, they're moving together. The, the greater the risk of recession in 08 when you chart it out, mm -hmm. the greater the probability of a Democratic victory. Yes, they're, they're invested. They have a stake in, uh, in economics going badly. They're, they're the political equivalent of short sellers. Okay, so they're moving in tandem. Jonathan, we finally found something correlated in this market. Is this something that the, <laughs> the, the Dems are going to run with? Terry, uh, hello, it's election. Of course, the Dems are going to run with everything they can, and the Republicans are going to run with everything they can. I mean, what, what, and what I are the Republicans going to run with, then? Well, you'd, you'd have to interview, uh, you know, uh, Dick Gillespie or something, I don't know, a Republican <laughs> and, strategist. <laughs> What, what I know is that the Democrats just don't seem to celebrate capitalism. They are not capitalists. I think that's where wealth comes from. If you listen to everyone from John Edwards on the extreme left to Hillary Clinton, they are collectivists. They think that it's the government's job to make a free society somehow more fair. So it just it's going to be hard for, I think, anyone who embraces capitalism to get behind uh, Democrats, at least this dem these Democrats. You know, Wayne, though, it does seem this housing slump plays right into their playbook of the two Americas and the like. Well, I think it does, but I think Jerry's right. It's, it's not a question. You know, you've got to separate cause and effect. You can't say, oh, the Democrats causing this. No, the Democrats aren't causing it, but they're taking advantage of it. I, I don't blame them. They're trying to get elected. Listen, that's what a politician does. If he has to lie a little bit, if he has to shape it a little bit, every politician is going to try to get elected. That's his lifeblood. That's what he does for a living. So he's going to, right. you know, do whatever he can. If he takes advantage of the fact that somebody's unemployed, if he takes advantage of the fact that, you know, people are... Uh, 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 jobs are going overseas or whatever it is, even though that might be ultimately to the benefit of the United States. In the meantime, they're going mm -hmm. to take advantage of everything they can to get elected. Well, that's Jonas, right, but, that the, but there's, two there's two different ways to get elected. One way is to constantly carp on what's wrong, and another way is to become part of the solution and help fix it and mm -hmm. take credit for that. So what Jerry's saying is the Dems are, are, are invested Jerry. in this. The, of wait, course, wait the Democrats. Jerry, you you don't get elected to, uh, doing what you said. Nobody gets elected doing positive. Everybody gets elected doing negative. That's Ronald Reagan problem. did. Ronald Reagan got elected on positive things. No, he got he, no. got he got elected because the other people didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> okay, well, he did have a positive message. But you know, back to the question, Jonas: Are the Dems invested? in saying that things are wrong with this economy. They definitely want to highlight the things that are wrong. If we have another recession under George Bush, of course that's going to help any Democrat. The, well, the first, one's, the first one started uh, I'm just saying, November. look, a bad economy oh, helps the opposing party get elected. It's not their fault and them highlighting that there's trouble in the housing market or the economy. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is some of their solutions to fix these things I think are questionable. But you can't deny the fact that this right now is the slowest economy in the world that's a pretty bold and, statement. Well, now, I don't, again, I would say the solution is lower the corporate tax rate to be more competitive with other countries. That's not the solution the Democrats are providing. But the facts are the facts, and they will get elected. All right, but this. we still it's grew at three percent in the second quarter. It's a, it's a nice, sure, sure, yes, economy. we did. But I think the distinction here is that the Democrats are not pouncing on the subprime crisis and the credit crunch as much as what they're doing is, is what they've always been doing is, is talking, you know, a pop, taking a populist stance, talking about you know economic realities for the average American, not for the people on Wall Street. They're talking about wages. They're talking about health care, they're talking about jobs, you know, and that's what they've always been doing. And of course they're going to do that more. This is an opportunity. I agree with you, Jonas. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's yeah. nothing anybody hasn't expected. And it's also a big reason why the Democrats are getting a lot more support from business on the, both the left and the right this year. Jerry, could the White House take more of an initiative here? I mean, it's the month of August, Congress is on vacation, Bob Novak and the like say, you know, the, the White House should get ahead of this, this housing crunch and credit crunch. 
Yeah, we've seen an incredible presidential leadership vacuum. Chris Dodd gave the press conference on Tuesday that steadied the markets. Where was the president? It's time to end this vacation. Yeah, the Fed is doing its part, but there are regulatory hurdles. The trial lawyers are sharpening their knives to go after the mortgage industry. Uh, this uh, credit disruption is coming from the threat of litigation and regulation, and the president needs to get on this fast. The Democrats own it politically, um, and they're setting the agenda policy-wise. Yeah, but John, Jonathan, free marketer that you are, didn't it worry you seeing Ben Bernanke and Chris Dodd sitting down and, and talking, and then Chris Dodd comes out with statements about what the Fed is doing and thinking? Yeah, well, absolutely, Taryn. I think there is a regulatory risk to this market. And unfortunately, again, I think you know, that's a message that many Democrats tend to get behind, whether it's any crisis. You know, that the answer is more regulation. Uh, you know, every element, it seems, that these guys talk about, whether it's health care, Social Security, a more progressive tax structure. You know, again, I think, I think you know, the market would love it, America would love it, if there was a more capitalist message instead of that populist to America. See, I think America is going to vote for whoever they think solves this housing problem the best way. That's not necessarily a good idea to try to solve it, but whoever puts forth the proposal that they think is going to make everyone happy next year when their housing prices fall below their loan value, that's the person who's going to be in the White House, unfortunately. Well, you know, that's... That's, that's where we're heading, aren't we, Wayne? Because I mean, none other than Bill Gross, a cap, big free market capitalist, saying that we need a resolution trust type of bailout for the housing market. <laughs> well, you might, but the housing, the housing issue is just one thing. I think Lee is more, uh, more tuned to this thing in, in saying that. Well, I mean, they're, they're, universal health care is going to be a big, uh, uh, a big uh, uh, agenda. Uh, you know, all of those things that are outside of the housing area that, that, that the Democrats are pouncing on, and, and it's a very populist thing, and I don't, I don't blame them. I mean, if I would, you go out and you say, listen, I'm going to take all the money away from the rich, greedy, money-grabbing capitalists and give it away to all of the people down here. There are more of these people down here than there are the rich, money-grabbing capitalists, so that's, therefore I'm going to get elected. So why shouldn't I say that? Yeah, I'm I mean, not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the re re reality of it. Even a billionaire hedge fund manager only has one vote. That's, that's what keeps this country great, I guess. Okay, thanks, Wayne.